Well, Molly, why won't the rest of the EU guarantee that our citizens can stay uh, when we leave uh, the EU? I think this is a real opportunity that's been missed here because if we'd gone in at the beginning and said, well, OK, we've decided to leave, but we're going to protect all EU citizens who are already here and all their rights, then the European countries would probably have responded in kind. And all but this we've made it pretty clear. I mean, all the statements avoided. from government have said we're just waiting on the reciprocal arrangement. I know, so but why the, aren't they? I mean, it's so them playing hardball, no, not the government. No, because we've made the change. We've said we're going to change the conditions, so we should have made a, a firm offer at the beginning to protect all EU citizens here. And then the same offer would have come back. That was very clear. And it was Theresa May's... It was clear, was it? Yeah. So you had those assurances that they would? It, it was clear from that side. And I think Theresa okay. May's statement that those people were going to be bargaining chips caused a lot of disappointment. Well, this, yes. All this chat about hardball and you know tough negotiation and upping the ante, it's really unhelpful. It's actually economically damaging as well now. I mean, I, I heard today from Bournemouth that there's a big drop-off in terms of people applying to language school. We're seeing the same with foreign students coming to our universities. There's a sense of people not being welcome. And that's really economically damaging because some of our most important service exports are, in fact, in the on, field of on, education. On the other hand, Molly, um, people voted to leave and immigration was undoubtedly a big issue in that decision. Uh, a lot of people feel they, there are too many immigrants here. OK, they so the fewer. question of immigration is very confused and very complicated. We're not actually talking about immigration as such here. We're talking about freedom of movement. It's a reciprocal right. So European people can come here and we can go to their, their countries. So it benefited both of us. And I think that's what we need to protect, that British people, especially British young people, can still travel and study and work abroad. Yeah, but just, just look at the, this is the government white paper, which I've been, been studying. So take, for example, Poland. Uh, according to the government, there are 900,000, about a million Poles here. But when you look over the page to see how number, many Brits there are in Poland, it's probably a couple of hundred, a well, thousand or so. That's not so why would you want to guarantee their rights? Because uh, we're, we're, it's not a direct transfer like that. So British people often retire to Spain and France. They're not necessarily going to Poland, whereas Polish bricklayers may want to come here. But I think the important point is that these discussions are already happening at the European level. Because actually there's problems caused in Poland if all their young, skilled people come here. And in the case of Lithuania, out of four million people, one million are actually living abroad now. And it's all the useful young people. So actually the Greens and Peasant Party won the election in Lithuania recently on this point about trying to bring young people home. But free, yes, free movement is going to be restricted, isn't it, when we leave? There's no doubt about that. Yes, well, if we're outside the single market, it will. But I, I still think it will be very economically damaging to leave the single market. And the question is, are people prepared to trade off the loss of their jobs, the loss of their income, higher prices against restricting immigration? And the surveys show they're not prepared to lose anything financially in order to restrict Justin. immigration.